This is the second video on the topic consolidation. In this video, we will be studying consolidation test done in laboratory and also two methods for finding the void ratio at different load increments. So we'll start with consolidation test done in laboratory. The apparatus is called consolidometer or oidometer and here you have a consolidation cell and soil will be filled in this cell in a paste form. Okay, And on the top and bottom we'll be placing filter paper and porous stone and this on the setup you'll be finally keeping the loading pad. Okay, so initially a porous stone will be kept, kept and then on the top of the porous stone you will be keeping a por filter paper and on the filter paper you will have the soil and on the top again you will be keeping a filter paper and on the top of the filter paper you will have a porous stone and on the porous stone we will be keeping the loading pad. Okay, and this setup will be kept on the apparatus for loading. Before giving the loading to ensure 100% saturation we will be connecting the soil to a small water reservoir and it is connected to the soil okay then an initial seating load of 5 kN per meter square is given and then the first increment of load is given and the pressure given is 10 kN per meter square and soon after we give 10 kN per meter square a stopwatch is started. A stopwatch is started and we will be taking the readings from the dial gauge at the specified minutes. At After uh, 0.25 minutes we will be taking the reading from the dial gauge. After 1 minute we will be taking the reading. After 2.25 minutes we will be taking the reading. Like that we will be taking readings till 1440 minutes. 1440 minutes means it is 24 hours. After 24, up to 24 hours, we will be taking the readings from the dial gauge. After the completion of 24 hours, we will be giving the second load increment. We will be giving 20 kN per meter square and then again we will be noting the values from the dial gauge at the specified minutes. Okay, This process is repeated till the desired maximum load is reached. After the completion of the test, we will be uh, unloading the specimen and it is allowed to swell. Final reading is also recorded and after removing the apparatus, after removing the soil from the apparatus, we will be determining the dry mass of the soil and also the water content, final water content is also found out. Okay, so this is the procedure for consolidation test and we can have two types of this consolidation cell. This is the schematic diagram. Here you have the consolidation cell and the load is given to the consolidation cell using loading bar and the dial gauge is also shown for noting the displacement. So as I told you, we can have two types of consolidation cell. First one is the floating ring type and second one is the fixed ring type. So in floating ring type, the porous stone can move in this direction as well as in this direction. See this bottom porous stone can move upwards or the consolidation ring can move downwards and this upper porous stone also can move downwards. Okay, So as the consolidation occurs, here also the, there is movement of porous stone, here also there is movement of porous stone. That is known as floating ring type. Now in fixed ring time, the bottom porous stone cannot move. There is no comparative uh, movement for bottom porous stone. Only upward motion is water can go out through only through the upper porous stone and when consolidation occurs the upper porous stone moves down. Okay, So this is a difference between the floating ring type and the fixed ring type. Now as I told you early in the earlier videos, the consolidation test data or the results are expressed in the form of a float between the void ratio and the pressure. Okay, So finally after the consolidation test, we will have to present the data using a graph between the void ratio and the pressure. 
For plotting this curve, we need to know the void ratio at the various load increments. So now we are going to study two methods for finding the void ratio at various load increments. The two methods are hydrosolids method and change in void ratio method. You just have to remember these formula. First one hydrosolids method. The hydrosolids Hs is equal to Ms by G rho W into 1 by A. Ms is the dry mass of the soil. G is the specific gravity of the soil. Rho W is the density of water. And capital A is the area of cross section of the specimen. So first you have to find out Hs using this equation. And the void ratio E is found out by the formula H minus Hs by Hs. Where H is the height of the specimen at that particular loading and hs is the height of solids which is obtained from this equation so that is how you do hydrosolids method the next method is change in void ratio method in this method we'll be first finding out what is the final void ratio and then we'll be finding out the uh, delta a that is difference in void ratio and we'll be finding out all other void ratios so this is the method followed in change in void ratio method. Now we will see an example for both the methods. Okay, So first we will start with height of solids method. These are the given data H0 phi. Initial height of the sample is given 25 mm. Cross sectional area capital A is equal to 50 centimeter square. Volume is given as 125 ml. Ms dry mass of soil is given as 190.24 gram. Specific gravity G is equal to 2.64. The final water content WF is equal to 24.94 percentage. And the least count of the dial gauge is also given. It is 0.1 mm. Now the applied pressure load increments are given. Also the dial gauge reading. The direct dial gauge readings are also given. Now we will see how to solve the problem how to find out the E value at different load increments. So as I told you, the first step is to find out Hs. Using that formula, you know all the values. You can just substitute and can find the Hs value. We are substituting in centimeters. So we will be getting the final answer in centimeter. You have to convert that into mm. 14.25 mm is the height of solids Hs. Now, these two are the given data. Applied pressure and dial gauge reading is already given. We have to find out the difference in dial gauge reading. It is very easy. You just have to take the difference. Okay. So here you can uh, omit this column. And in the second case, when 10 kilonewton per meter square is applied, the difference in dial gauge reading is 482 minus 490. So you'll be getting minus 8. Similarly, for all other cases, here what will be the difference in dial gauge reading? 470 minus 482. So that is minus 12. Here it will be 431 minus 470 minus 39. 390 minus 431 minus 41. So like that you can find out all the values. Okay. Now this is the difference in dial gauge reading. But we need the actual difference in height. Okay. So for that we can use the least count of the dial gauge given. The difference in height delta H is equal to least count of the dial gauge into the difference in dial gauge reading okay so you just have to multiply this value with the least count least count is given in the uh, question in the data it is given as 0 0.01 mm so just multiply you will be getting delta h values one point to be noted is that delta h will be always negative when the applied pressure is increasing and if the applied pressure is reduced delta h value will be positive see here if you observe all the values are increasing and at the last value there is a drop there is a decrease so here also all the values are negative and at the last value there is a positive sign so if there is a decrease in applied pressure the value will be positive delta h value will be positive if even in the question if it is given as positive you can you can simply write it as negative okay you can write it as negative sign if the applied pressure is increasing okay 
Now, after obtaining the delta H value, you can find out the H value using this formula. H is equal to H naught. H naught is the initial um, height. It is given in the question. H naught plus or minus sigma delta H. You have to take the sum of delta H and then you have to reduce or add from H naught. So, in the first case, H naught is equal to H. So, you can directly here, you don't have any value. It is 0. It is 0. So, here you can write 25 itself, 25 mm. It is given in the question. Okay. Now, in the second case, it is H naught. H naught is 25. 25 minus 0 0.08. Okay. You have to take the, you have to consider all the delta H values above this level. Okay, so it is 25 minus 0 0.08, you will be getting 24.92. Now, when you come to the third uh, step, that is for the applied pressure 20, the value will be 25 minus 0.12 minus 0 0.08 and that will be 24.80. Similarly, all other values. So, what will be this value? How will you get 23.74? This value will be 25 plus 1.15 minus 0.46 minus 0.48 minus 0.47 minus 0.41 minus 0.39 minus 0.12 minus 0.08 will give you the value over here. Hope it is clear. So you got the H value and finally the E value e is equal to H minus Hs by Hs. Hs is already known. We know the value of Hs. It is 14.25 and for each value you have the H value also. You just have to apply this equation. You will be getting the value of void ratio for each load increment. See here 25 is the H value minus Hs. Hs. You will be getting this value. Here the H value is 24.92, 24.92 minus Hs by Hs. You will be getting this value. Similarly, all other values. Okay. Hope this method is clear. This method is called height of solids method. Now we will study the second method. Second method is change in void ratio method. Here also data are given. The initial um, height of solids, uh, initial height of the sample is given 25 mm, cross section area 50 cm square, volume 125 ml. Mass of dry, dry mass of soil is, all, is given, G uh, specific gravity is given, final water content is given, and final height of the sample is also given 23.7 mm is given, least count of the dial gauge is also given, applied pressure is given. Dial gauge reading is also given. Okay. Now, we will start with the method. First, we have to use this equation and find out the final void ratio. Final void ratio is equal to final water content into the specific gravity. So, we'll, if you substitute the final water content is 24.94 percentage, you have to substitute in decimal. So, that into G value will give you 0.666. So, this is the final void ratio. Okay. Now, you need to find out the delta E value using this equation. If you apply this equation, you can um, here, if you apply this equation to the final value, we can get delta E value as 1 plus E value. Final E value is 0.666. So, apply that. And what is the final H value? Final H value is 23.74. Apply 23.74. And we don't know the value of delta H. So, substitute that as itself. Delta H itself. So, you will be getting delta E as 0 0.072, so 0 0.0702 delta H. So, delta E in all the cases will be 0 0.0702 delta H. So, you have to remember E value, final E value as 0.666 and delta E is equal to this equation. Okay. So, as I told you, final E value, E L is equal to 0.666 and delta E is equal to 0 0.0702 delta H. Okay. Now, we will start with the table. As already discussed, we can find out the difference in dial gauge by just taking the difference. Delta H also can be found out. This was explained in the previous method. 
h value can also be found out i am not explaining these things again it is already explained in the previous method now delta e delta e can be found out using this equation so we know the value of delta h this is actually not required you can do with delta h value just multiply de delta h value with 0 0.0702 you will be getting delta e value here for the first value don't have delta h value so you can leave it as blank now for the second value delta h is minus 0.08 so minus 0.08 into 0 0.0702 will give you your delta e value delta e is minus 0.006 okay like that you can find out all the delta e values hope it is clear it is very simple also see at the last for the last value delta h value is positive so this delta e value is also positive now yeah this is very interesting how to find the final e as i told you you have to start with el that is the final e value is 0.666 so where should i write this 0.666 it should be written at the last column so here at the last column i have written 0.666 then i'll be going upwards in the upward direction, I will be finding out the E value. I already have the delta E values, right? So, this value can be obtained from this delta E value. You just have to subtract this, my do. You can just do this minus this, okay? So, here this value can be obtained by subtracting this value from this value, okay? So, you got the new value for E, it is 0 0.585. Now, how to get this value, the E at this value, it will be 0 0.585 minus, minus of 0 0.032. See, it will be this value minus this value. Okay, here already there is a minus sign, so you will have two minus signs. So always remember this, this value minus this value will give you this value, okay? So likewise, you can find out all the E values up to the top, okay? So this is how you solve the E value, solve for the E values using change in void ratio method, okay? Thank you.